Just imagine you woke up tomorrow and discovered that there was irrefutable proof that the Holocaust was actually done by America and Hitler was the good guy but just a scapegoat. The first thing you would do mentally is reject it. You know America would never do that. America was the good guy in World War II. It was a righteous war because of the genocidal Nazis. However, if the evidence was too powerful and you felt you had to accept it, that would involve changing everything about your worldview. Psychology has discovered that our memories are not video playback, but they are consistently being rewritten and reinterpreted as new information is processed. If something as huge as Hitler being a good guy and America being the villain was to come to light, the level of memories that would have to be altered and be reinterpreted would be insane. So much so that many could not cope with it, neither kill themselves or completely deny it in the face of evidence, as Turkey does about the Armenian Genocide and Japan does about the Chinese sex camps, as their belief that their nation can do no wrong is so strong they will never admit it. I'm sure many German citizens underwent the same sort of psychological mindfuck when they found out that their great and beloved leader had slaughtered millions of people in the concentration camps. I remember the day Obama was elected. Everyone was kind of in a daze. I couldn't get my head wrapped around the fact that finally no more Bush, and that this was the kind of country that would elect a black president. I was elated but intensely overwhelmed at all the new information that came in as the entire reality seemed to shift. I remember seeing my boss who looked as if he had just lost his best friend that day as his candidate hadn't won and the evil socialists were now in power. Now imagine you woke up tomorrow and discovered that there was irrefutable proof that your loving, merciful, all-powerful, all-knowing God who you thought of as a caring father and a best friend didn't exist. This was a deity all of your memories were tied to, and you based your entire life around. Could you really go through the mental stress involved that would allow your mind to survive this paradigm shift? Every single one of your memories would have to be rewritten. All those times you thought you experienced miracles from God would have to be rewritten as statistical probabilities. Every memory you had, where God held you and helped you get through a rough patch, would have to be rewritten as you getting yourself through it and every memory of a good and loving and just God would have to be rewritten as an evil, bloodthirsty, vengeful God once you actually read the Bible without bias and started reading what it actually said. Your social life and even marriage could potentially be ruined. Sudden paradigm shifts are literally like a harsh hallucinogenic trip. Your brain starts running light years per second as it tries to fit all the new information in place much of the time not very successfully, as the new information begins harshly altering everything you know about life. The brain doesn't like this, so it has many defense mechanisms against it, including the ones discussed in this series, such as rationalization. I have a feeling a factor involved in the evolution of these mechanisms was a way to prevent suicide when the truth became too horrendous or overwhelming. People like my mother, who found religion in their teen years or later, had to go through this kind of paradigm shift, as they had to analyze all their actions, words, and deeds, as well as their views of their past memory and their concepts of good and evil and how they see the world. They now have a whole new plethora of things that they have to study and new mental construct they have to create for themselves to be good according to their religion. This kind of sudden change creates the illusion that your holy book, in my mom's case the Bible, had mysteries that were unknowable, which she would never fully understand, but should study it for the rest of her life to become more godlike. It is also emotionally and mentally overwhelming as your mind begins to change. However, I never had the paradigm shift as an adult. I was raised in it. I knew the Bible like the back of my hand and all the rationalizations one could use to defend it. I walked, talked, ate, and slept Jesus, to the point that my Jesus-like compassion led me to become cripplingly depressed at the thought of all the suffering people around the world and the ones burning in hell for eternity at the will of my all-loving God. It was my fear of hell that kept me a Christian. My paradigm shift happened long before I became an atheist. It just required the knowledge and research for all the pieces falling into place to allow myself to gladly accept that God wasn't there. It is said that persons over 50 have a ridiculously low chance of changing their beliefs. This is because unlike young people with few memories, older people have mounds of memories and mental construct that if the reality of the world was to ever force itself through all their psychological defenses, 
the numbers of memories they would have to change would take probably the rest of their life to process. This would be like learning how to walk all over again as an elderly adult. The overwhelming vastness of it all would probably make the majority of them commit suicide as they have not had the time or mental power to create new mental constructs needed to process and deal with a reality change. When they claim they can't imagine how we could be happy without a belief in God, they are showing that they really couldn't be happy if they didn't believe in God. Another advantage that younger people have over older is that we are in an environment of constant change. Most of the current older generation spent most of their childhood with little slow changes in technology and then remained as oblivious to it as possible unless they were the types considered nerds in high school. Change was a bad thing to them. It meant upheaval and social disharmony. Our generation and younger are used to and have been raised to readily accept change, especially in technology and discovery. Any major change, such as the discovery of Artipithecus ramidus or Homo florensis, or the fact that Homo florensis is now classified as the descendant of Homo habilis, is quite overwhelming but thrilling as the pieces fall into place. We Gen Xers and younger will be much better prepared for new technology than they ever were, even as we get older. This is also why Gen Xers and younger are good at learning and understanding the impact of greenhouse gas emissions and why older people see it as balderdash. At this point in time, I don't ever plan on deconverting my mom and definitely not my grandma as there is no way they could deal with it emotionally or mentally. What I would consider a triumph is if I could convince my mom that hell doesn't exist as I don't know how she's mentally dealing with it. I think she may just think my atheism is just a phase and if I could make her believe that gays aren't evil and trying to convert all of us to their gay agenda. Even better is if I could get her to reject the Old Testament as barbarism and creationism as unscientific, uh, but I'm not holding my breath. So remember, if you're talking to a religious person, there are serious emotional and psychological protection mechanisms to protect them from the harshness of a paradigm shift. Hopefully, we can come up with some mental constructs to help the transition for believers that will make it a little less painful.